Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Irene and today I want to show you how to make beautiful hand-looking Christmas ornaments using foam bases and fabric scraps. So, to make the ornaments you will need foam balls. Mine are 5 inches in diameter. And first you want to draw patterns on them. I've decided to make floral ornaments, so I'll draw olive, oak and holly berries on them. When looking for inspiration, it's a good idea to look for coloring pages with the patterns you want to place on the ornaments. I did just that and for you, as usual, I'll leave my templates in the description box. You can transfer the images using carbon paper or you can cut out and circle them right on the ball or just copy them by eye like me. If you are a skilled artist, you can draw an image right out of your head, but I'm not good at drawing at all, so for me it's much easier to have a reference. At first I outlined the drawing with thin lines and then I'm making the lines thicker, finishing the pattern. If you choose another image for making on the ornaments, you want to avoid ones with lots of small details. I'm dividing each leaf along the veins. For the smaller leaves, it's enough to divide them in half along the main vein, or even leave them solid, and you want to divide the larger ones along the lateral veins too. Thus, it will be easier to cover them with fabric, and at the same time, you will get a leaf vein pattern naturally. After you've made the images, you want to cut the balls along all the lines using a sharp knife to a depth of about 4 or 5 mm. This is very proximate, you just want to make them deep enough to tuck a little fabric into the cuts. I've started working with a box knife, but I've ended up using an exacto knife as it's smaller, so it's much more convenient for cutting smaller curved lines. Actually, any knife sharp enough will do here. So, I'm cutting along all the lines of the images, I'm not cutting the background yet, we'll deal with it later. By the way, if you made a mistake when drawing, you can adjust it by using whiteout or white acrylic paint. I found out that I divided the oak leaves incorrectly. If I cut them along the veins, I would get areas with indentations along the edges of the leaves. It would be hard to cover them with fabric properly, so I'm erasing the veins and dividing the leaves into sections according to the wavy edge, so that each rounded tip on the edge of the leaf is separated from the adjacent ones. It doesn't quite coincide with the anatomy of the leaf, of course, but is much more convenient to work with. I've had no problems like this with the holly, as its leaves have pointed tips, so I've divided them into parts along the veins. For filling the pattern, I'll use a velvet in two shades of green and brown for acorns. You'll also need a glue stick and a tool like a stack with a thin tip or a thick needle. I'm smearing the closed area of the image with the glue stick, attaching the fabric leaving a small margin along the edges and then tucking the fabric with the stack into the cuts along the perimeter of this area. Then I'm cutting off the excess, leaving a small allowance and finally I'm tucking the allowance of the fabric into the cuts, making this part nice and clean. The technique is very easy, you may face problems only if you use thick and rigid fabrics or fabrics that fray really easily. In the first case it will be hard to tuck the fabric into the cuts and in the second case the edges of small parts can come loose, so you'll need to get used to working with such fabrics. The light green velvet I'm using is actually just the case, it frays a lot, but as you can see it's still possible to use. I'm 
I'm not preparing any pre-cuts of fabric for the leaves in advance. I'm just placing the edge of the fabric onto the desired area and then cutting it out in place. It turns out very economical, almost waste-free. I have only very tiny leftovers. And also you don't need a lot of fabric for these images. You can use even the smallest scraps. I'm making the olive leaves into shades, half lighter and half darker, and I'm covering the smallest leaves with a light green velvet entirely. For the oak leaves, I've mixed lighter and darker areas on each leaf. By the way, for oak you can use four colors as well, like yellow, orange, purple, red, brown, to get a very bright and cheerful ornament. And by the way, it's absolutely not necessary to use elegant fabrics like silk or velvet. Even cotton of fright shades will look great here. Although I really love velvet Christmas decorations, they look so high-end and a bit old world on a Christmas tree. I'm making the acorn caps dark brown. First I wanted to use this brown color for the leaves too in some places, but then I decided to keep the same colors for all of the three ornaments for them to look like a set. To fill the acorns themselves, I found a small piece of beige velvet. My corduroy will work great here too, as acorns usually have grooves. Finally, I'm filling the holly. Here I'm making all the leaves dark green because in real life holly has dark green glossy leaves. I've decided not to cut and fill the berries in the applique technique. I want them to really stand out, so I'll attach them later. After the images are covered with fabric, I'll work over the background. It's a bit more complicated because here you'll have to do the markup as you go. The leaves are sitting on the branches and I also cut through the drawing of the branches earlier. Now I'll cover the background with fabric and tuck it into these cuts so that the pattern of the branches is clearly seen. But all of these background areas should be enclosed in order to cover them with fabric, just like I did with the main image. And here you want to cut the background into sections by connecting the pointed tips of the image. This is, if you have a pointed leaf, the background cotton line should start at the tip of this leaf. You can easily understand why this is so important if you try to cover a section which has such a tip going somewhere in the middle and not along the edge. It will be hard to tuck the fabric here and wrinkles may appear or the fabric may come loose and you want to divide this piece into two. To avoid this, I'm connecting all the sharp tips on the image with the cuts. You can decide how to make these cut lines all by yourself. You can make straight lines or you can make them curved. You can connect the tops of two leaves together or you can connect all the background cotton lines on the top or on the bottom of the ornament. I've started by covering the areas inside the main image and then I'm finishing the rest which is free from the image. And finally, in order to make the branches stand out a little, I've decided to add a thin golden thread here. Actually, I've pulled a thread from a metallic decorative crochet twine. You can also use a brown thread here, it will also look good. I'm tucking the tip of the thread into the cut, then applying glue on the bottom side of the thread and attaching it to the ornament. I'm using latex glue here. 
any glue that is suitable for fabrics will do. Here, best is to start with the side twigs and do the central branch at the very end. Then you will not have to slip the threads under the already attached one later. Next, I'm covering the holly ornament, and to be honest, I almost hated it in the end. The leaves have so many sharp tips, and as you remember, in order to fill the background, you want to cut between all the sharp tips of the image. So I ended up having the background cut into dozens of very small pieces. Of course, making such an ornament takes much longer than usual, so I regretted a little that I decided to use this image. Rounded leaves are much easier to work with. But on the other hand, the ornament turned out so textured and interesting looking. By the way, you may like to have a beautiful abstract pattern out of fabric scraps by just cutting through all all over the ball like this. As you can see, I'm covering the ornaments with cream-colored silk. This used to be my silk blouse, which is too small for me already and has some stains. Well, and rather than throwing it away, I'm recycling it. When using light and thin fabrics like this one, the pen outlining may shine through, so you may want to paint them over first with white out or white paint before you cover the background with the fabric. The oak branch ornament was the easiest one for me, as I didn't have to cut the background so tediously, so I finished it very quickly. By the way, I haven't mentioned before that I left a circle of about half an inch in diameter on the top of each ball. I will make the ornament hangers here. As for the size of these background separate pieces, best is to work with medium sized areas. Very small ones will take a lot of time to cover and if you leave them too big, wrinkles may occur on the fabric. And just like on the other ornaments, I'm decorating all the leaves with a golden thread. To make the hangers, first I'm cutting three circles out of packing foam a little less than half an inch in diameter. I'm hot gluing these puffy circles onto the areas that are still uncovered. Then I'm smearing them with the glue stick and covering the circles with gold brocade fabric on top. Due to the puffy circles, they come out rounded and dimensional. I've decided to make holly berries out of half beads. I'm covering the half bead with red velvet and tightening it with a thread on the inside, making a kind of a bag. I'm cutting the fabric as close to the bead as possible and here we go! 
I've wrapped half beads of different sizes like this and I'm hot gluing them onto the ornament. Finally, I'm sticking a string for hanging into the center of the ornament cap, hot gluing it to place, tying a loop, and we're done! You can make such ornament without spending a lot of money if you use old cloth or fabric scraps and oh my, they look so good! An old silk blouse or a dress that you are not wearing anymore is enough for making many, many ornaments that will look like they were bought in a high-end store. You can make the set bigger by adding ornaments with other plants like a maple branch or a rowan branch and your guests will be blown away, I can guarantee, especially if you tell them what they are made of. And you can also make such a set as a great handmade gift to your loved ones. Well, I hope you liked today's project. Please let me know what you think of it down below. I also want to remind you that I have several more videos all about making Christmas balls in the same technique. I'll link them down below. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!